This video was sponsored by Skillshare. You got a skill that you like doing but want some pointers getting better at it? Well, Skillshare's got over 30,000 classes to choose from, guaranteed to help you out. Virtually any ability you'd want to perfect, they've got a series of videos giving you tips and tricks on. If you're an aspiring rapper or producer, you can check out Samus' lyric writing course, or King Arthur's series on how to punch up the depth and quality of your sound when recording. Even if you're just starting out as a musician, they've got classes on fundamentals like vocal training, music theory comprehension, the basics of playing piano and guitar, seriously anything you can think of. And hey, if you start making some scratch off your skills, they've even got classes on how to navigate through the small business taxes of it all. The first thousand people who click the link below will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium, and after that it's less than $10 a month for an annual subscription anyways, so if that sounds good, check out the link in the description. Hi guys, Rap Critic here, and this is a Patreon voted episode. And if you want to decide the next voted episode, sign up to my Patreon now. Plus, get to see episodes early and join the Patreon Discord to talk with fellow fans. But alright, time to give you what you voted for. Let's talk about Crybaby. So, you've heard me review Megan the Stallion. If he ate my ass, he's a bottom feeder. You've heard me review the baby. Doing my push ups in that pussy, getting our workout on. Mm -hmm. I put a pass out on the bed, just six word out on. Like, but can the tag team champions of Filthy Lyrics out nasty their previous efforts with their biggest collab to date? Well, let's find out. So the video starts with an employee at a toy store playing with some of the dolls, and, and, and am I am I seeing this right, or, or does her hair actually spell the word tit in cursive? Well, that's a pr pretty clear indicator for where this video's going. Or wait, is it supposed to say TT there, but it's hard to tell because it's hair, so, you know, it's pretty much impossible to put the dots over the eyes. Hey, what are those dots even called anyways? Oh, they're called tittles. Well, well that certainly feels appropriate for this episode. But okay, we get into the song proper, as DaBaby launches into what's gotta be the like the 40th thing he's done with Baby in the title. Seriously, he's had Blame It On Baby, Baby Talk, Baby Talk 2, Baby On Baby, Babysitter, Baby Shower, Throat Baby, and I'd be remiss to mention his collaboration with Lil Baby called- Oh, you know what it's fucking called. I don't know why he keeps bringing attention to the silliness of his name in these titles. It's like he's in a competition with 2010's Justin Bieber over who can say it the most. But okay, in the context of this song, it's not just a- Weirdly specific calling card. Here it's actually related to a dance move. Lay on my stomach to the up, to the crowd, baby. It's a move from the early 90s New Jack Swing era. You know, when people used to dance like their goddamn lives depended on it. Now this move in particular, the crybaby, involves lying down on the floor and banging on the ground, so it's not exactly a dance for the packed house party. For God's sakes, you would've gotten friggin' trampled. Nah, it's more a move reserved for backup dancers of R&B singers when they're breaking out a down and dirty slow jam and need some appropriately sexy choreography. And as you can see, it's quite frankly the closest thing a dance move gets to simulated sex this side of a VR porn headset. And bearing that particular image in mind makes the hook feel that much more vivid in illustrating his playboy status. As a man whose heartbreaking antics her closest people try to tell her about, but the D's just too good to heed the warning. As the woman in question orgasmically declares her undying love for the man. That ain't the baby, that's my baby. Well, the, the baby. A friends and a mom hate go. Lay down on the bed, do cry, baby. Now, there's some discrepancy in my ears with what he's saying in the final line of the hook here. Oh, you ain't gonna respond to my text? Oh, yeah, homie, keep on my diamonds with six. See, when I first heard this line, what I thought he was saying was, Oh, you ain't gonna respond to my text? Oh, yeah, homie, keep on my diamonds with six. And I figured it made sense in the context of the lines that came before it. Oh, she ain't gave me none of in a while. She had to put weight now on my way. Where he brings up that she hadn't contacted him in a while, but he's nonchalant about it because she knows he's got a good time waiting for her. So I figured the next line was him jokingly taunting her, like, <gasps> Not gonna respond to my texts, eh? Well, I guess I'll just have to take my diamond and sex elsewhere. But no, apparently what he's actually saying there is... Oh, you ain't gonna respond to my text? Oh, yeah, homie, keep on my diamonds with six. So the line's supposed to be about him asking her if she wants him to wear his chain while they're smashing. But as he's rapping, he just swallows so many words it fogs up the syntax of what he's saying. So if, if that's what he's saying, fine. But now it just feels odd in the context of the previous lines about how she might be ghosting him. Because then the scenario seems like... Oh, you're not gonna respond to my text? Fine! Be that way! It, oh, you, you run a Zoom meeting? What? <clears throat> Whoa. Anyways, uh, want me to wear my diamonds while we're doing it? Plus, that just doesn't sound comfortable. Like, the first thing I'd think about is the small links on a chain that sometimes get snagged on hairs on your body, and who wants to deal with that during sex? But hey, maybe some girls like sex with heavy medallions precariously swinging in their face. Doesn't seem to bother the girl he's with. What's your name? Keisha Key, Jazz and Jack, yeah. Who should probably be more bothered by the fact that he clearly doesn't remember which girl he's currently talking to. Ash, Ash, yeah. Ah, but who needs irrelevant pleasantries like remembering someone's name when all homeboy cares about is getting it in? Shorty came through with that so good, I said, fuck it, I ain't using no rubber. Uh, okay. Not gonna tell you how to live your life here, but with all the STDs out there, it would probably be wise to save the sex without the Jimmy hat for someone you really trust. Or, you know, someone whose name you can remember at the very least. 
But okay, it's a heightened porn fantasy of a song. He's playing the role of a swaggering sex god who's running through scores of chicks with various points of the track basically sounding like sex in audio form. Uh-uh, don't fuck me like that. Fuck me like this. Uh-uh, right, come on, uh-uh, uh-uh, come on, uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. And one or two points where they cut the music to just this visceral percussive beat that definitely sounds like skin-slappingly real sex noises. I need a reaper. Thought I was in trouble how you tearing them cheeks up. Keep me a freak who the flavor of the week. And while the baby's verse is fine, it doesn't really raise things above the typical sex rap joint as a whole until Megan comes in, matching his energy with the same level of cheeky dismissiveness of exes, but from a female perspective. Like, if the baby set up the theme of being someone with mind-meltingly awesome sex game who couldn't care less if their exes catch feelings, Megan really hits the mark, paralleling and in some cases responding to some of his previous lyrics. She ain't gave me none of in a while. She had to put weight now on my way. Oh, you ain't gonna respond to my text? Oh, yeah. If I ain't let him hit the pussy by now, then that nigga lame if he's still waiting. I ain't even saved your number. No, so no, I can't reply to no text. Damn, that's it. That's just cold blooded. Ash, Ash, Sierra, Sarah. Jordan, Tommy, Timothy, Gay, which might look Jonathan, bring in Sarah. Nice. Bitch trying to break about taking my man. Ha, I needed me a nigga over here. Jesus, I mean, nothing faces this woman. She's just like, oh wow, you took one of the guys I'm messing with? Bitch, you ain't do nothing but free up my schedule. I'll make him cry about the pussy. Hmm. Probably why my shit's so wet. <laughs> Gotta admit, there is something pretty boss about flat out saying your pussy's powered by male tears. Kinda conjures up images in my imagination on how she'd go about gathering those tears. But you know what? I'm just gonna suppress those thoughts. But but seriously though, did, did she make them like cry over it? Or, or or does she bottle up the tears beforehand so she can directly apply the lubrication oh, to the- God damn it, I said I wasn't gonna think about that! Listen to I'm done recording this video. But yeah, overall, I give this song a 4 out of 5. It's a classic battle of the sexes type joint that doesn't quite reach the true levels of lyrical depravity I've heard on their other tracks, but it definitely has enough going on to serve as a solid radio joint that immediately gets you searching for the uncensored version. And at the end of the day, it's the highest aspiration you can hope for from your favorite top 40 radio rap songs, wouldn't you say? Well, that's the episode. Leave a like if you like because it helps, comment if you have something to say because it helps even more, and hit the subscribe button and the bell afterwards because the bell is what actually alerts you to new episodes. And if you want to keep up with everything I'm doing, check out my link tree in the description below for my Twitch streams, merch, movie and album review podcasts, and any other stuff I'm up to. So check all that fun stuff out and I'll catch you next time. Peace.